language lesson 24. So um, go ahead and get out a clean sheet of paper and label it language notes, name and dates. I don't make you guys take notes all the time, but sometimes it's just easier if you're hearing and writing things for it to make sense for you. And not that it's hard, but it just kind of seems like it could be a little bit lengthy, but I'm going to try to make it as short and simple as possible, okay? So um, language notes, name and date at the top of your paper. You can pause the video until you're ready. Okay, so today we are talking about different types of sentences. So the first type of sentence that I want to talk about is a simple subject. So write simple subject on your paper and underline it. Now I wrote mine backwards from what I'm telling you guys to do, but just write that first. And then you can put equals and write subject plus verb. That is a simple sentence, a subject and a verb. A simple sentence, an example, and go ahead and write your example. The cat is angry. We have a cat that is angry all the time. Her little face always looks angry. The cat is angry. Our verb is is, and our subject is cat. It's a simple, it's a simple sentence. I wrote simple subject right there. That should say simple sentence. Sorry, guys. I hope I was saying sentence all this time. So that is a simple sentence. A subject plus a verb is a simple sentence. And now another kind of sentence we can have is a simple sentence with a compound subject. And that would be subject plus subject plus verb. Okay, so a simple sentence with a compound subject. Sentence or subject plus subject plus verb. An example would be Jack and Jill went up a hill. So write your example sentence. Jack and Jill went up a hill. Our verb is went. Who are who what went? Jack, Jill. So that is a compound, or that is a simple sentence with a compound subject. Jack and Jill is the compound subject. Now also remember we can have a sentence that has a compound verb. So a simple sentence with a compound verb equals subject plus verb plus verb. And an example of a simple sentence with a compound verb would be um, the baby cried and slept. So what is our verb? Cried and slept. Who cried and slept? Baby. So that is our subject. So that is a simple sentence with a compound verb, cried and slept. There's another one. The dog barked and interrupted the video. Barked and interrupted. Compound verb there. Um, so then we can also have a compound sentence. So a compound sentence is made with a subject plus verb plus subject plus verb. And these are connected, remember, with the comma and, comma or, comma nor, comma for, comma yet. Any of these commas and connecting words will connect your, to your subject and verb to your other subject and verb. Um, so here, here's an example. Our neighbors...
compound sentence that has two complete thoughts, two subjects, and two verbs. So that is our compound sentence, okay? Um, let me give you an example of using some of the other connecting words because sometimes we don't hear them, hear them as often. I'll just say them out loud. You don't have to write them, but just so you have an idea. Um, this is one using the connecting word or. I can take the bus, comma, or dad can drive me. So I can take the bus is a complete thought. Dad can drive me is a complete thought. Connected with, comma, or. Here's one using for, comma, for as your connecting word. We must leave, comma, for. It is late. So we must leave is a, is a complete thought. It is late is a complete thought, and they are joined by the connecting word, comma, for. Um, here's one using yet. Um, arithmetic may seem difficult, comma, yet. Anyone can learn it. So arithmetic may seem difficult is a complete thought. Comma, yet is our connecting. Anyone can learn it is another complete thought. So those are our compound sentences. So turn, your, um, pay, turn to page 55 and let's look at think C on page 55. It says underline every verb two times and every subject one time. If the subject is you, understood, write you in parentheses above the sentence. It's only going to be understood you if it's what kind of a sentence? If it's an imperative sentence, gives a command. Rejoice in the Lord. Take out the trash. Look at me. Put that pencil down. Be quiet, please. These are all commands, all of those. The understood subject would be you. You do all of that. Um, so you're going to write you above the sentence, and then you're going to identify the simple and compound sentence by writing S for simple or C for compound in the blank. Circle the comma and the connecting words, comma and, but, or, nor, for, and yet, that join the parts of the compound sentence. So we automatically know if we see a comma, but, comma, and, comma, or, comma, nor, comma, for, comma, yet, then it is going to be a compound sentence, okay? So let's look at number one. John will bring the popcorn, and Ashley will make candy. So what is our verbs here? Well, first of all, I see a what? A comma and. Go ahead and circle that comma and, because that tells us that we have what kind of a sentence? A compound sentence. Subject plus verb plus subject plus verb. So circle your comma and. Put your C on the line. And let's find our verbs for our first complete thought will bring it's a verb phrase will is on our verb list we can stand up and bring who or what will bring john john is our subject so john should be underlined once will bring twice ashley will make candy what's our verb in our second complete thought will make don't forget that will we just talked about it who or what will make ashley ashley is our subject good job look at number two Always speak the truth, and God will prosper you. Always speak the truth, and God will prosper you. Always do the dishes, and mom will be happy. Always feed the dogs, and your dogs will love you. Always make your bed, and you will get into a nice bed at night. Always do all of your work and watch your videos and Miss McDermott will be pleased. Always, this is telling us, always speak the truth, comma, and God will prosper you. So first of all, I see a comma and a joining word and, circle it. That tells us that we have what kind of sentence here? A compound sentence. Put C on the line. And let's find our subject and verbs. What's our verb in the first sentence or the first complete thought? Speak. Who or what is to speak? I hope you got it. You. Right. You in parentheses above it. That first complete thought is an imperative sentence. Um, our, our second verb in that sentence? Will prosper. We're using will a lot here. Who or what will prosper? God. God is your subject. Very good. Verbs are underlined twice. Subjects once. Number three. We rode out to the island and had a picnic. So I do see a connecting word, but does it have a comma? 
There's no comma with it, so it will not be a compound sentence. But we could have, we have to see what that comment or what that connecting word is joining. Subjects or verbs or what it's joining, okay? So what's our verb? Road out to the island and had. Had is on our verb list. We can stand up and row. So our verb is road had. So we have a compound verb here. And who or what road had? We did. So we have a subject and a verb and a verb. So we have a simple sentence with a compound verb. So you will write an S on the line for a simple sentence. Number four, no wind can shake a house with a firm foundation. What's our verb? It's a verb phrase. One of the words is on our verb list, always and forever a verb. The other one, you can stand up and do it. Can shake, very good. Can shake is our verb. Who or what can shake? Wind, very good. Wind is our subject. What kind of sentence do we have? Just an S, a simple sentence. Number five, that big dog seems friendly, comma, but I am afraid of him. Whenever we have a comma and a connecting word, and, but, or, nor, for, and yet, what kind of sentence do we have? A compound sentence. Put C on the line. And let's find our subjects and verbs. Circle your comma, but. Um, what's our first verb? It's on our verb list. Half, has, had, do, does, did. Shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. Did I already say it? Half, has, had, do, does, did. Shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. It's not on our verb list. Seems is our verb. It is, but we haven't learned this verb yet. It's on a different list. Seems is your verb. They shouldn't have this in this sentence yet. Seems. Who or what seems? Dog. Very good. Dog seems. Our next verb. Am. And then who or what, because am is on your verb list. Am is our was verb. Am and who or what am? I am. I is your other subject. Good job. Um, number six. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, comma, and mine iniquity have I not hid. My goodness, that's a wordy sentence. All right, so I see a comma, and. So that tells us that we have a comma and a conjunction, comma, and, but, or, nor, for, and yet. So what kind of sentence do we have? A compound sentence. Put a C on the line. Um, let's find our, our verb and our first complete thought. Acknowledge. You can stand up and acknowledge. And who or what acknowledge? I. I is our subject. And let's find our verb and our second complete thought. It's a verb phrase. One is on our verb list, the other one you can stand up and do. Have, hid, underline it twice. And who or what have hid? I, I is the subject, very good. Um, number seven, Cody has not taken his nap, comma, nor has he eaten his lunch. I see a comma and a joining word, comma, and, but, or, nor, for, or yet. So when we have a comma and a conjoining word, what kind of sentence do we have? A compound sentence, C on the line. Let's find our first verb and our first complete thought. Cody has not taken his nap. Please do not say has not taken. Not can never ever be a verb. Has taken, very good. Who or what has taken? Cody, Cody is our subject. Um, has he eaten his lunch? What is our verb? Has eaten. And who or what has eaten? He, very good. I turn to page 56. The boys and girls um, had a contest. What's our verb? On our verb list, had. Who or what had? Boys and girls. This is a simple sentence with a compound subject. Okay, just like Jack and Jill. All right, number nine. The hollow branches creaked and swayed. What is our verb? Creaked and swayed, very good. And who or what creaked and swayed? Branches. So we have a simple sentence with a compound verb. These are not compound sentences because there is not a comma with those joining words. No comma, no compound sentence, okay? Number 10, 
They ransacked the hideaway, but found no clues. My goodness. Um, what is our verb? Ransack. I see a joining word, but found. So we have a compound verb here. Ransacked, found. Who ransacked, found? They. They is our subject. And that is just a simple sentence with a compound verb. Number 11, Marquette and LaSalle explored the Mississippi River. So what is our verb? Explored. And who, who explored? Marquette and LaSalle. Very good. We have a, a simple sentence, we'll put S on the line, with a compound subject. There's no comma with our connecting word. Um, number 12, Congress passed the bill, comma, and the president signed it. So our joining word has a comma with it, comma, and. If we have a comma and a joining word, and, but, or, nor, for, yet, we know it is a compound sentence. Circle your comma and and write C on the line. What is our verb in our first complete thought? Past. And who are what past? Congress. Good job. In our second complete thought, what is our verb? Signed. And who are what signed? President. Good job. Number 13. He should study, comma, or he will be sorry. Oh, my goodness. We're always sorry when we get bad grades because we didn't study, so you must, must study. And I see a connecting word, comma, or, comma, but, or, nor, for, and yet. <coughs> and, and, um, so, excuse me, so comma, or is our connecting word, circle it. If we have a comma and a connecting word, we have what kind of a sentence? Compound, write it on the line. And what is our verb for our first complete thought? Should study, very good. And who or what should study? He, he is our subject, good job. Our second complete thought, what is our verb? Both words are on your verb list. Will be, very good. And who or what will be? He, good job guys, that's your subject. Number 14, I lose many things, comma, but I never lose my shadow. Comma, but, we have a comma and a connecting word, so that tells us, circle it, that tells us we have what kind of a sentence? Compound, write your C on the line. And let's find our first verb, our verb in our first complete thought. Lose, we all can stand up and lose something, and we do often sometimes, huh? And who or what lose? I, I is our subject. And in our second complete thought, what's our verb? Lose again, and what's our subject again? I, very good. And number 15, rice and cotton grow in a warm climate. What is our verb? Grow. And who are what grow? Rice and cotton. Very good. So that is our subject. And that is a simple sentence. It does have a compound verb, but there's no connect, there's no comma with that connecting word. So, and there's not two complete thoughts. So it's just a simple sentence. Okay? All right. Um, Look at um, remember F at the bottom of the page. Circle all the compound nouns in the following list. Now, you have got to understand that compound nouns, there are two different kinds of, com well, two different ways to think of a compound noun. And if you're only thinking of one of those ways, then you are going to miss this on your test. And I know some people did on the last test even though I explained it. Cupcake. Cupcake is a compound word. It is. Because it's two words put together to make one word, cupcake. But in being two words, cupcake is a cup a noun? Yes. Is a cake a noun? Yes. Cupcake is also a compound noun. Okay, the word football, football, it is a compound word, but it is also a compound noun. The word, oh, I'm not thinking of another one, mailbox. The word mailbox is a compound word, but it is also a compound noun. Also with your compound nouns, Miss McDermott. Does more than one word make up my name here? Yes, 
So Miss McDermott is also a calm pound now. What about living word? Y'all don't look at my writing right now. I'm trying to go fast. What about living word Christian Academy? Are we talking about one place right here? One place? Yes. But how many words make up that one place? More than one. So Living Word Christian Academy is a calm pound noun. Stone Mountain. Are we talking about one place when we say Stone Mountain? Yes, we are. So Stone Mountain is also a calm pound noun. What about Dr. Astachio? When we say Dr. Astachio, are we talking about one doctor? Yes, but there's more than one word, so that is also a compound noun, okay? So you can't just think of these being compound nouns, but these compound words, as long as they're nouns, are also compound nouns, okay? So let's look at Remember F. Circle all the compound nouns in the following list. Now, you will do that on your own. So what you guys are going to do is in letter F, you're circling all the compound nouns. Please keep this in mind. And please don't think that you're smarter than Miss McDermott and I don't know what I'm talking about because I do, okay? These are compound nouns as well as these being compound nouns. And then look up at right D on the same page. It says change each pair of simple sentences into one compound sentence on notebook paper. Circle the connecting word and the comma in each compound sentence that you make or that you write. So it says the rain stopped. It is still too wet for a picnic. So you can say the rain stopped, comma, yet it is still too wet for a picnic. So you're going to just use a connecting word, and you, or you can say comma, but either one will work. So you're going to correct, uh, or you're going to make those sentences compound sentences, and then look at page 55. On page 55, you are going to, and write A, combine each pair of simple sentences into one compound sentence on notebook paper, circle the comma and connecting word. And then remember B, show your mastery of the verb forms you have learned so far. In the blank, write the correct form of the verb given at the end of the sentence. So you will do remember B on your, you know, on your, your book, your paper, from in your book, but write A on page 55, and write D on page 56 will be on notebook paper. And I'm sorry, I skipped a part. Look, look on the back of 56, guys. I'm, no, I'm jumping everywhere. I'm so sorry. On page 56 on the back on Think E, it says study the examples below and then contrast formulas for the following sentences. What I had on the board, hopefully you took notes. If you didn't take notes, you need to go back, 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 back on the video. Write your notes because that is exactly what Think E is on your paper, okay? All right, so go ahead and complete page 55 and 56. Many of um, these, the, these pages, many parts of them will be for a grade, okay? So do your best.